Hello again, I'm Dr. Sean Allen with the Homunculus Group and Want to Get Fast and the Gate Guys and Slow Guy Speed School. You can see all of those at the beginning of this uh, small clip <clears throat> and their web addresses. I'm partnering up with uh, Chris Corfist and Dan Fichter from I Want to Get Fast and Slow Guy Speed School and uh, Dr. Ivo Warelop, uh, who's my uh, uh, research and uh, teaching partner out in Colorado. We're going to be talking about uh, <clears throat> a small clip here on more foot function. Today we're going to be talking about this first MPJ or metatarsal phalangeal joint, which is the joint between the first metatarsal and the first proximal phalanx. <clears throat> this is the joint of the big toe that's requiring uh, complete uh, extension, uh, roughly 45 to 60 degrees at toe off. <clears throat> that position is this position here. You need to have 45 to 60 degrees of extension at this joint in order to have adequate toe off. Obviously, if you have <clears throat> some of the clinical conditions such as hallux rigidus or hallux limitus, also known as turf toe, where that toe has some degenerative change around the, the top part of the joint or dorsal crown of osteophytes as it's referred to, um, the, uh, the toe can't go into full range. And without full range, you're going to obviously shorten the gait stride on that side. Instead of being able to take a full stride on your opposite leg forward as you get into full range here, you can take a longer step. With the limitation of the range, you're going to abbreviate your step on the opposite side. Clinically, this is really important to notice this on an examination or in your athlete because if there's asymmetrical range from one side to the other, the step length will be abbreviated on the other side and can create some physical symptoms such as uh, IT band syndrome, uh, trochanteric bursitis, some lateral foot pain or knee pain on the opposite side because of the way the gait and the weight bearing is occurring on the opposite side. If the gait <coughs> Excuse me. If the gait cycle or steppage is shortened because of the limitation, so it will be shortened on the opposite foot as this engages early. And we'll show this right now. If I was to take a step here and I can get to full range on this on the naked foot here, okay, I can get a certain step length. If that range is abbreviated, so instead of getting to here, I can only get to here because this joint is locking. I might not be able to get to this full stride. I might only get to here. Shorter steppage on the right side, which will create a frontal plane a drop on this uh, right side. I will literally tip the foot out on this side because no longer am I progressing forward. I'm progressing on an oblique plane. <clears throat> so hallux limitus, hallux rigidus, turf toe um, can all create a limitation here. So <clears throat> let's talk about a functional deficit instead of those ablative deficits. Uh, the ablative is a non-changeable degenerative condition, turf toe, etc. A functional deficit would be, what if there wasn't enough strength in the extensor group? Through the extensor hallucis longus, which comes off the proximal uh, tib fib, or the extensor hallucis brevis, which comes off the lateral malleolus calcaneus area. If those are weak, you won't be able to get full extension either. So weakness of that extensor group will give a functional turf toe, which can give you the same clinical phenomenon. So you need to be able to test these muscles, longus, brevis, to find out if there's weakness. If there is, you can have the same clinical phenomenon. So let's go back up into the gait cycle again <clears throat> and look at carryover here. If I was to be able to, and this is going to go back to our foot tripod examples. <clears throat> if I've got lots of extensor strength, I can get to my rear foot, lateral, and medial and get a good foot tripod positioning. Then I can bring the feet down, maintain my tripod and my arch, and ankle rocker over it and take a normal step. <clears throat> However, if I approach the ground and don't have as much extensor strength, I might only be able to get to this position here. So as I come across now, you can see that the medial aspect of the tripod is not as prominent in this position as it is here. So what you see is the first metatarsal here doesn't get down to the ground as aggressively. A person who has this head on, you'll see a presentation of something like this where they now have to tip further to get that first metatarsal to the ground merely because the extensors aren't strong enough. However, if I was in this position and I had good extensor strength, you can see this first metatarsal gains good purchase on the ground. Whereas with some weakness, 
um, I'll have to tip further to get to it. What you can see then is that the arch has to drop down in in order to get that first metatarsal to the ground. This is very similar to a four foot varus presentation and you may see the extensor weakness um, in the four foot varus presentation as well. So you need to look for this problem in four foot varus or in just this functional weakness where they can't adjust that tripod to the ground. So when you see your clients walking, your athletes walking barefoot, you may see excellent toe extension on one side, the other side it might be abbreviated. And if it's abbreviated, their tripod is not as effective as it would be in this position here. So that's our little discussion on extensor toe strength and extension, adequate extension range of motion and functionality of the first MPJ joint.